everybody, welcome back to another Horror Pack unboxing where I am gonna open up four fantastic horror movies and I'm gonna watch them and give you my thoughts. Whether I've seen them or not, it could be third watch, it could be fifth watch, 100th watch, first watch, we will see. And today, we're here for the <laughs> January 2023 Horror Pack. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry, Daddy's being all loud. He was he was napping right there, my baby boy. But this is where I need to film. Um, so, I have this, it is open, because uh, my dad thought it was a book he had ordered. Uh, but we haven't actually opened the movies. So just real quick, let's run through this. Uh, Horror Pack sends me these for free, which I appreciate. Apparently they enjoy my reviews. I feel horrible because it is the end of April and I'm just getting to the January box. I really fell behind. We're gonna hustle through January and March this month. We're gonna try and get back on, on track here because I have like four of these I'm sitting on. But um, just wanna say that it's not paid for, it's not sponsored, but like I said, they've been very friendly to me. They do send it to me for free. So that makes me like them a little bit more. It's about $25, the service. I don't remember if they're shipping or not, but you can save $3 on your first box by using my special code, Bloody Butts. That's all one word, uh, B-L-O-O-D-Y-B-U-T-T-S, Bloody Butts. And I hope you do, and I hope you enjoy, and you can choose DVD or Blu-ray. Of course, I get Blu-ray, and uh, there's always at least one movie in there that is an exclusive movie to their box, at least in the United States, at least at the time of release. Um, so, you know, in terms of retail. <laughs> now, of course, I have a massive movie collection of almost 8,000 physical titles, so it's rare I get something I don't have outside of their limited editions, which are always great because I am a physical collector, so it's nice to have different box art, different renditions, things you can't get. But that said and done, we're gonna go ahead and open this. Ooh. I've also had a lot of grape juice, adult grape juice. Okay, so nothing else in the box. Good, I didn't show an address. And it comes like this. Now I don't peek at the spine. I peek tiny, just a tiny bit at the spines to figure out if I can't figure out by feel which way to open these that we get the uh, exclusive last. Okay, so I'm gonna look on this side. So I'm just looking for that little number on the, uh-oh. Okay, that's the Horror Pack exclusive. Okay, they're in kind of upside down this time. So I couldn't see the number, but I saw the Horror Pack logo. All right, so let's see what we get. We're gonna read the backs of the boxes. I'm gonna go watch them, give you my reviews and show you the trailers there, and then we'll see what we think. Let's check out the first movie we get from Horror Pack for January, 2023 is, ooh, I don't know this one. Distorted with Christina Ricci and John Cusack. I've never heard of this. Don't fear the lies, fear the truth. Oh, it's an Echo Bridge release. Um. Here's the back of the box. Here's the front of the case. And let's see what we got here. Lauren and Russell Curran, Curran, decide to move away from the bustle of the city and into the peaceful oasis of The Pinnacle, a coveted luxury condo that boasts ultra-modern design and state-of-the-art features and security systems. When Lauren starts to suspect that the building has a dark side, she seeks help from Vernon, an investigative journalist who has an interest in cyber conspiracy. Together, <coughs> I was hoping I could avoid that. <clears throat> they come to believe that the pinnacle must be brainwashing the unsuspecting residents. Ooh. This is rated R. When is this from? Ooh, a tight 86 minutes. That's good. 2018, 2016. I should have turned up the lights in here. Let's see what I can figure out here. Nope, let's get a real flashlight. <laughs> I'm a good YouTuber. I'm all professional and stuff. Come on, I had it. 2018, okay. Bonus features include cast, production, I'm assuming that's behind the scenes footage, story and themes, the future of filmmaking. I, oh, bonus feature, well no, yeah. I'm assuming those are featurettes. So one, two, three, four featurettes on there. Um, okay, interesting, who else is in the credit block? Mind's Eye Entertainment. SP Releasing, Bridgegate Picture Corp, Christina Ricci, awesome, Brendan Fletcher, I know that name, Vicellis Shannon, I don't know that, and John Cusack, okay, uh, written by Arn, Arn, with an E, R-N-E, Olson, and directed by Rob King. I know nothing about this, so I'll be going in blind, and hey, cool, something I know nothing about, and it's short, so, I mean, because I know everything, so... Yes, I know everything. Because, you know, I drink and I know things. All right, second movie in the pack. I don't know this one either. Wow, we're going to have an interesting January box. Reunion. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. 
excuse me, Julia Ormond. Every family has a legacy. Reunion. Okay, oh, it's Dark Sky Films. This has got potential then. They released some really good stuff. All right, what do we got here? I really should have turned up the lights, Jesus. Uh, I'm gonna do some reviews. <clears throat> you can cut the tension in just the first scene with a knife. 90 minutes later, you'll need a chainsaw. Daily Dead. Cool. That's a great little blurb. Um, has eerie atmosphere in spades, says Film Craziest. Lots of uh, little uh, film festival banners. I don't know if they're winners or what, but all right, let's do this. <clears throat> a pregnant woman returns to her recently deceased grandparents' old family home to spend time with her estranged mother. What begins as a tenuous reunion slowly turns terrifying. A psychological thriller that preys upon perception. Reunion sees veteran actress, actress Julia Ormond deliver a tour de force performance of threateningly quiet intensity and features a twisty narrative that will burrow itself into the darkest corners of your mind, 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 mind. Special features include behind the scenes in a trailer. Nice. Dark Sky Films. Uh, da, da, da. I don't recognize any of these companies. A lot of companies involved. Uh, filmed by Jake Mahaffey. Sorry, it's hard to read in here. Julia Ormond, Emma Draper, Cohen Holloway, Ava Kane, Gina Laverty, John Bach. Yeah, I don't know any of these people involved. 2020, tight 95 minutes. So that's two for two. Two, not only movies I don't have, movies I've not heard of, movies that maybe Mary will be into both of these. We'll find out. I know, I'll tell you after this video. I'm almost through the stuff I gotta do. So, all right, let's check out the one last one before we get to the special edition, and we have Ill. Wow, that is three for three movies I don't own and have never heard of. What is up with this box? That's awesome. All right, Ill, Final Contagium. The infected will find you. They're gonna find you. There's the back, there's the front. Oh, it looks, it looks good. It looks professional. Ooh, this looks like my jam. Okay, this looks like one Mary's not into, but let's see what we get here. A rogue scientist in Chile illegally spreads toxic and biochemical substances by way of contaminated money, leading to a worldwide pandemic. First, the virus is spread in Italy when two women steal a contaminated case of cash. Then in Kosovo, I wanna go down Kosovo. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I lost my place, crap. A transsexual pays for surgery only to find that all of her injection sites have been infected with the virus. Interesting topic. Uh, lastly, a father in Germany tries out extreme methods to save his contaminated son from succumbing to the virus. Is this the anthology? Oh, that would be awesome if this is a zombie anthology. Hell yeah. All right, so it's another Echo, Echo, Brig, Echo, Echo Bridge Acquisitions Court. Maybe they've gotten a little better in their time. 104 minutes, okay, a little longer. Multiple directors, so yeah, I think this is indeed an awesome anthology. It is English language. I don't think we're gonna recognize anybody in here, at least I'm not, I shouldn't speak for all of y'all. I'm kind of skinning, there's scam, sk sk skinning, skimming, skimming, skimming. There's a lot of names in here, and no, I don't recognize anybody, but you know what? That sounds awesome. That sounds like what I'm watching tonight, probably. Um, Blu-ray DVD combo pack, nice. Wow, okay, I'm just absolutely amazed. Like I said, three for three, not only do I not own them, but I've not heard of any of them. And they're not like nothing burgers. I mean, John Cusack and Christina Ricci star in one for hell's sake. All right, that's said and done. Let's see what the special edition is and we can move on to the reviews. What do we get this time? Horror Pack is presenting. Ooh, that is really nice cover art. Uh, worst Laid Plans, an anthology of vacation horror. Oh, this sounds fun. Wish you weren't here. Horror Pack Limited Edition Blu-ray. Blu-ray number 19? No, 79. I was like, they were way past 19. And wow, 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 wow. This is like the box of absolute firsts all the way around. I don't know if they designed it or what, but we have a proper, proper, fully proper back cover. Even the printing quality of this looks fantastic. Congratulations, Horror Pack. <laughs> You know I'm gonna give you crap about it. I'm sorry, but I love it. I don't have to offer my services this time. This looks awesome. I already noticed it's a tight 77 minutes, so I might even get to watch this tonight. All right, filmed in three different states by three acclaimed genre short film directors, all making their feature debut. 
okay, if you have three filmmakers making three shorts and compiling it into a feature, that doesn't mean those directors are making a feature debut. They still have not made their feature debut. I'm sorry. I'm not going to accept that. That's not Horror Pack's fault, but I'm not going to accept that. That's, that's, some, that's some inaccuracy. All right, this is a small print though, crap. Three tales of vacation themed horror adopted from the best-selling book by Grindhouse Press. Oh, interesting. In Deep in the Heart, a fractured family tries to reconnect while touring a cave system that hides a horrifying secret. In You've Been Saved is the story of two reunited friends on a road trip full of nostalgia and hangovers. When one of them has slipped a cryptic note by a young girl, their vacation takes a sinister turn. And finally, with Taylor Family Vacation 93, a father on vacation determined to find out the truth behind whoever is stalking his family just out of sight, comes to the sobering realization that the answer he seek might just be hand hidden within the contents of his video camera. Shot in West Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. That's, that's three very interesting shooting locations. <laughs> I, I lived in North Carolina. I, um, Worst Laid Plans is the most ambitious independent horror anthology you'll see this year. I, I doubt that. I mean, I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, it's probably good, but I, I, I doubt that. I doubt it's ambitious. I mean, the pictures on the back are just headshots, so you don't have money. Nobody put money into this. And by money, I mean like millions, not hundreds of thousands. Anyways, I, I'm being picky. Special features include, we get a commentary from all three directors, two trailers, making a featurette for Deep in the Heart, a blooper for You've Been Saved, complete home video for Taylor Family Vacation 93, a TVF 93 original ending montage, and a TV, TFV 93 Little Roman Pizza commercial. Little Roman. I know we have Little Caesars, and wasn't the Roman Pizza? There's a thing. And where did they shoot that? North Carolina? No, I was thinking it was Indiana. NYC Horror Film Festival Q&A pa panel. Okay. Um, yeah, and again, the back looks legit good. So I'll give it to them. Any names I recognize? There's some names that sound familiar, but they're like generic names, like John Hale. That's not a knock on the person. That's just a common name. Um, no, don't recognize that. Don't recognize that. Don't recognize that. All right, well, still sounds cool. And at a tight 77 minutes, it can't be that bad. If you're going to be, you either got to be good or you got to be short. <laughs> now, you can be good and short, <laughs> but I'm just saying. So, hells yeah, that is four movies from Horror Pack I know, do not own and I have never heard of. So, uh, let's see what we think. <laughs> okay, Horror Pack, I talked her into watching Distorted. The day I opened the box, I'm getting on it, I told you. <laughs> uh... This has three stars out of five. We watched it on Voodoo. I might give it one and a half. <laughs> I have issue with this. Uh, I will admit I was a little sleepy, so I zoned out a lot in the first third. Okay, so I can fill you in if that is I don't part think, of the issue. I don't think that's part of the issue. Because okay. my issues are not necessarily with the story so much or anything like that. Because, like, okay, maybe you could certainly pick apart the story and blah, blah, blah. It's all in the execution. Mm -hmm. It just all feels somewhat, I don't want to be too too rude, but it feels kind of laughably executed. I think... Part... Like there's something here that could have been really good, but it... Okay, so yeah, I, I think ahead. part of the problem is that, so you're supposed to be in a classic unreliable narrator situation. Okay, yeah. Uh, where she has, you know, the mental illness and you see, like, in the very first scene where she thinks that there's somebody in the apartment, but there's not. Like, right. Um, the thing is, you, once she moves into the pinnacle, there's really not so much of, you're pretty certain that she is seeing what she thinks she's seeing. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. And, and, and we kind of lose the unreliable narrator part. Well, I think that's part of what I'm talking about is in the execution, you don't feel like she's going crazy. Obviously, the story is supposed to be one of those, is she crazy or is this shit real? You never feel that. You feel like she's in some weird weirdness, but then they never go weird enough with it to feel like that's what they're trying to do. So it just always comes flat. And even though I love Christina Ricci, I feel like her performance, I feel, and I, I, <coughs> I don't, <coughs> I don't put this on her so much as much as I feel like maybe it was just poorly directed or something because 
I feel like she's trying to give a good performance, but somebody is not knowing what movie they're making, so they're not really mm. directing her in a way to fit it, coupled with not knowing how to direct it. Mm. And then John Cusack feels really good in the role to the point where I started questioning, wait, is he actually a conspiracy theory nut in real life? <laughs> like, he's one of those actors that I'm not sure it's him, but there's somebody sort of in his group, for lack of a better term, that really is. And I was like, hmm, this feels too real. Uh, uh, God, Randy Quaid. I know, right? Uh, not quite, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Brendan Fl Fletcher is really good in this. He's usually really good in everything. But even he is like the resolution of some of his stuff at the end. And then even like the pacing of the re resolution at a lot of stuff Ooh. is just like, it's wildly paced and just a very inconsistent we're just jumping. Oh, and then, okay, now we've moved on. Uh, here's a reveal. Oh, no, we just totally fucking moved on. Um, even the end actually made me laugh. <laughs> it felt so undercooked. Um, again, I don't want to get too spoilery here, but there's sort of a reveal and, like, kind of the resolution of everything. And it just feels like that's it. That's all that took. And and now, oh, this is okay. Yeah. And then, like, a visiting of a gravestone with a character. It's like, did she actually ever know his last name? I know there was, like, a name reveal, but then it's like, how would she even know? And we're just going to say, okay, off screen, okay. Well, I, I could say why, but then that would require a lot of spoilers. Okay. <laughs> um, this is one of those movies where it's like, I don't normally root for a dark ending. I think it would have been better with a dark ending. Yeah. Because there's, de I think I know what you're talking about. There's yeah. definitely a place where you think things are going for the good guys, but it's like, oh, fuck, nope, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But then it's still kind of for the good guys, but maybe not. And then, yeah. But, yeah, I think if they had stuck, if they had done more to go like, okay, is this my personal insanity or is this something else? Yeah. And, and I think that they really that's where they really dropped the ball is because there was really no guessing. Yeah. So I think what it is, I don't think it's like my biggest, compl the thing I hate most about any movie is if it's too middle of the road, this kind of comes across middle of the road, but there's like a good idea here and good talent involved in this, but it's not brought together well. And, um, and again, I don't think the director did a terrible job. I think the director bit off more than they could chew hit a ton of cliches instead of doing something original with it that creates, like you really need to have a full masterful grasp of creating an atmosphere and a tone that draws the viewer in and holds them to it. Uh, that is severely lacking from this film as it does feel direct to video that, middle of the road in a lot of ways. Some of that may have been the writing too. Yeah. The screenplay was probably just a little lacking. Although I don't think it's as much screenplay as directing. Because again, I think, like you said, I'm not somewhat the screenplay, yes. But I feel like great directing can work around weak screenwriting. Um, we, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely somewhat that. Yeah. But, but I do think th the story is good. But yeah, some of the dialogue... Yeah, you're right. The more I think about it, the script itself, not so much like the, the story writing, the concept, the I, there's a good idea here. It's an interesting mm -hmm. idea for a movie. There's an interesting like setting and um, sort of, you know, system of beats they were going for. But you're right. The script is undercooked in working something because it would r very much rely in subtleties to make this something interesting and believable. And they didn't land that. And then you give it to a director that is solid. I'm not trying to shit on the director or anything. But it's just the direction doesn't elevate it at all. So the whole thing just comes across as kind of, ugh. And by the time it's over, you're like, what, really? That's okay. Okay. And then there's, there's just some questions that it's like, you feel like there's unanswered questions, but at the same time, they are answered. It's just, it's not that interesting. <laughs> so you... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like some of the reveals of yeah. the group of people near the end. Like, oh, okay, okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, disappointing, disappointing. Uh, that three, what's interesting is it has three out of five stars, but it says 18% next to it. And I'm like, that's not three out of five stars, but 18% out of 100%, I could believe is the rating. 
Yeah, I uh... So I'm a little confused. We did watch it on the big screen. That location's cool. There's one really good gory, violent moment, but not entirely. This fits a suspense, not so much horror, but you know, yeah, maybe this is the good one to start on. Maybe this is the weakest one in the box. At least I don't have to worry about not being able to go to sleep. Yes, this is not disturb. This is not disturbing in the slightest. Um, but all right, well, you know, they can't all be winners, and maybe other people will love it more than we did. But it just maybe it was the where we're at. It just did not click with us. Next movie. Okay, so I just watched Reunion. Much better than the first movie I watched. This was great. This was a hidden gem. I loved this. This is a movie I need to revisit a few times to fully unlock it it's definitely one of those that you see it again and you're going to get more out of it because it is atmospherically heavy like it just draws you in it's a little slow a little quiet but it draws you in sucks you in makes you very curious where it's going and then gets a little bit bonkers by the end and the reveals and i enjoyed the hell out of this now as you can see my soul unopened i went ahead and watched it. it is on amazon prime if you have that i think it's on a bunch of other sites too it looks like it might even be on shutter but um Wow. Uh, performances are amazing. Story is interesting and somewhat unique. I did not see the twist coming. There's some legit shocking moments. There's very much, uh, and I'm not, I'm not telling you if she's good or bad, but a hateable mother in this for sure. Uh, uh, and our star, our lead in this is very, you, f you really feel for her. You really care about what she's going through. And uh, just, again, the atmosphere in this, the location, the set design, particularly the set decoration. The art department did a phenomenal job here. There are some moments. There is one, I wouldn't say there's anything terribly gory in here. There's a little bit of gore, but there's one thing that's gruesome in its own right. Um, it's kind of a normal, you know, I mean, well, I mean, it is sort of a normal uh, act in nature and something. Uh, but in this, the, ver the version we get of it is slimy and gross. <laughs> but I appreciated that because, again, it helped set the tone. It helped offset you for this. And just, wow, like a nice, tight 95 minutes. Even being, you know, when I say slow, I don't mean slow like dull. I just mean it's methodically paced. Um, it's very dreamy, very dreamlike in the way it pulls in your, uh, you know, What's the words I'm looking for? It's 3 a.m. and I'm going to watch two more movies. So I don't even know what movie, uh, what, what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, no, this was just fantastic. And that's not a movie I'd ever heard of or knew anything about. So this is like a huge swing and a home run grand slam for me in Horror Pack. Um, it's rare. They, it's, it's, it's regular. They'll give me cool movies I love and give me a chance to rewatch them and revisit them and be happy about that. It's very rare they give me a movie I've never, ever even heard of, much less one I've never actually heard of, and it's legit great. Like, I loved this. Maybe not everybody will. I mean, obviously, I like some weird shit. You know, I'm not saying this is Ari Aster level weird, but, like, I loved Bo is Afraid, <laughs> so take it all with a grain of salt. But, man, what a mesmerizing, engaging, uh, just kind of bit of a little bit of, there's a little bit of mind fuckery going on here. Um, I mean, I was definitely just like transfixed, jaw agape, watching the last five, ten minutes of this movie, just like, Whoa. <laughs> So, I definitely recommend this one, like, horror pack or not. I mean, this is just a movie, like I said, it's on Prime, I think it's a bunch of other places, Amazon Prime, at least in the US, so check it out, Reunion. Um, it's interesting, it only has three and a half out of five stars, according to the IMDb rating, or an IMDb 4.5. 95 reviews i disagree with that but again you know what am i what am i doing uh i like I, i'm a lot more into these things i suppose or a lot more open to these things but yeah yeah uh, again Hi for everybody a little dry a little slow at times particularly in the earlier days but as it starts unraveling and giving you some of the weirdness it really starts sucking you in and yeah man yeah, I really enjoyed this. So I know it's one of my shorter reviews, but I can't really tell you anything without spoiling stuff because, you know, I mean, it's, you just kind of should go in and just know it's slow. It's British family. It's all kind of, in, it's all basically in one house, kind of a shitty mom, some flashback stuff, some 
I don't, I, I don't necessarily want to say wibbly wobbly timey wimey or anything because I don't necessarily want to spoil if there is or isn't, but that's certainly a subject matter that again, I want to rewatch and more deeply involve myself with this movie because it's certainly with the reveals of the ending, the kind of movie you want to go back and see it through a new lens and through a new frame of mind and be like, oh, okay, well that takes new meaning, that takes new context. And this is my favorite kind of movies when you're just enjoying the ride and you're sucked into it, like you, you're with a good filmmaker that knows how to just draw you in and keep your attention. And then they flip the script by the end and you're like, what? I need to see that again. I did not see that coming. Maybe other people will, maybe it just hit me the right way, but I loved it. So I highly recommend Reunion. Definitely check it out. All right, so, uh, Ill, what is it? Final Contagium. I watched this last night, um, still sealed because I watched it on digital, I just bought it. I needed to watch while I was working. Uh, so, what did I think of this movie? Uh, it's okay. It's not terrible, it's not great. It's definitely a gross out kind of movie. And I was reminded, though not as great as this, but it in ways reminded me of The Sickness, which uh, you know I really, really loved because it felt kind of like Cannibal Holocaust, cost where the gore is mean and gross and just a depressing story underneath it all. This is not as potent as that, um, particularly in the story elements. Like the gore and the grossness of it is very gross. It is a bit of a depressing, dark movie. This would be a good pairing, like a good opener before watching The Sickness if you really want to have an insanely depraved night of just disgustingness. Um, <clears throat> I will admit too, as hardcore as a gore hound as I am, it's not all physical violence. You know, there's illnesses making people puss out and just be gross. <laughs> and there was a particular moment with a guy in a toilet that it literally made me physically gag. I mean, like I didn't throw up or anything, but I mean, it was rough even for me. And I was like, damn y'all, Jesus. <laughs> so there is that. Uh, it is sort of an anthology, but not really. I get they're kind of loosely tied together. Um, I think the last one is the weakest, by the way. Uh, I think there's one with like a guy who gets sick after saving somebody in the road. That's probably my favorite. That's the one that has the real gross out gag. Um, there's a thing about a, uh, a trans woman with, uh, you know, trying to be super beautiful. That one was really interesting, dark and depressing. And, uh, I forget the details of the opening one, but the opening one was really good too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With the two girls and the guy at the bar. Um, yeah, all that stuff was really good. It's well shot, it's well acted, uh, and the effects are pretty excellent through and through. It just, maybe it was lacking a little bit in the story or the emotional connection to the characters. Um, I kind of feel like at least in The Sickness, you had that one through line of the guy trying to go and get his lady. Then you also had the lady who was protecting the pregnant lady. So well, I guess that was the girl, the other guy. Anyways, you had all that in The Sickness. So you kind of had some people to root for. In this, it's just kind of people you barely know and really awful things happening. And it's gross and unnerving and, you know, disturbing and gets under your skin like a good horror movie would. And uh, I did very much enjoy it. So I'm glad to own it. It is definitely something I would watch again. Um, and like I said, if, especially if I'm in a mood, like, damn, what if you did like this and the sickness and cannibal holocaust? That might, that might break your brain as a triple feature, <laughs> but it would sure be an interesting triple feature. Um... But yeah, if you get a chance to check it out, I think it was like 13 bucks on Voodoo uh, if you're looking to grab it digitally. It wasn't streaming anywhere, at least nowhere I could find. Uh, but I had a good time with it. Plus, like I said, if you really like gruesome stuff, and I'm not saying it's the best effects in the world, but I thought they were really, really good all throughout. And uh, it's what, it's like 100 minutes? It wasn't too terribly long. And where it's broken up in kind of separate stories, it flows pretty well. Where are we looking here? 104 minutes, yes, yeah, so for an hour and 44. And, uh, you know, I mean, it doesn't really have a lot to say. It's just, it really does appear, appear to kind of be there as a movie to showcase gore effects and be gross and, and unnerving. I guess that's what it's saying, is it wants you to feel uncomfortable. Um, and maybe I suppose you could argue that it's kind of reminding you how fragile the human body and the human ecosystem really is essentially. So, <laughs> so uh, it does a good job with that, I suppose. I just, you know, there was no real character arcs or journey or anything like that for me to go on. So nobody to root for or against. Um, but you take those things that, that, that the sickness has, you take that out of the sickness and you kind of have this movie, uh, sort of, it's not, it's not, it's different, you know, it's, don't, don't think it's the same story or anything, but 
um, just in terms of feeling and tone and how I felt about it. But I really love the sickness and I really like this one, so I'd recommend it. That's my thoughts on Ill, Final Contagion. Uh, I think I'm going to move on to watching the next one. So really trying to get through these horror packs this time and not sit on them forever. So thank you, Horror Pack, for understanding and being cool. As long as you send them to me, I'll keep making them. Even if I do have gaps, I will keep making these, these movies and reviews. So, all right, let's get to it. We got one more movie to do. Let's do it. Ooh, look at me. I got a haircut. I'm all cute. All right, so let's talk about uh, the Horror Pack exclusive for this month. Uh, Worst Laid Plans, an anthology of vacation horror, which reminds me, I thought it was four, but yeah, it's actually only three. It's only three shorts. Okay, um, not bad. Uh, it gets worse as it goes. The three shorts, the first one is definitely the best. The second is second best. The third one, I don't know what to make of the third one. So, so let's run through some things. <laughs> I do think the acting in all of these, except maybe the third one, is for the most part really, really solid. Uh, the first one, I especially actually really cared about the characters. I think maybe the angry dad is trying a little too hard. He's a little too on the nose, but still pretty good even for him. But everybody else in there, the mom, the son, and uh, the, the tour guide, all that stuff, really, really good. Uh, the practical effect is pretty cool. Minor nitpick is maybe there's some sequences towards the end that go on a little longer than they should or show a little more than they should because it starts to get a little cheesy. But I really like what they did here with the cave tour and everything. And I thought it was nice. It was really engaging and really sucked me in. And I quite enjoyed the hell out of it. So good time. Thought sound design, everything there was really well done. It might have been a little bit um, out of balance in terms of the quiet dialogue to the big boomy Rory stuff. I did have to kind of ride my volume a little here and there. But I really liked it. So that was deep in the heart. Deep in the heart of Texas. Da, da, da. Okay, I get it now. Uh, then we have You've Been Saved. The Reunited Friends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one had a cool story. But I, I wasn't loving the execution that much. Um, the actors, the main actors were a little off-putting and not great. They weren't terrible. I've certainly seen far worse performances by far. But I don't know, just... Uh, it was a little weird. I really like the story and the twist about it. The effects in it are pretty good. There's some decent practical effects. Um, but like the, 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 the annoying, especially at his age friend was more annoying than he probably should have been. Um, it was a little undercooked in the sound department, uh, particularly sound design, but nowhere near as bad as the last one. We'll get to that. And uh, again, pacing pretty good on this one. Uh, maybe it could have been a little bit tighter here or there, but nothing really standing out is going on too long or too much. And again, I do like the twists and the turns and some of the fun stuff they do, and the ending sells pretty well. So I had a good time with that one, <clears throat> and that was called uh, You've Been Saved. And again, fun, twisty turns. I think you could have gone more with this, though. Even within the story you have, you could have done a little bit more with it. Again, I don't want to get too into it without giving out uh, uh, details. Again, though, looked really nice. Again, not quite as much as the first one, but yeah. So then we get to the last one, the Taylor Family Vacation 93. And this one's a bit of a head scratcher for me uh, because, well, A, I got excited then disappointed because up front I thought, ooh, is it going to be found footage, like VHS found footage? I like that, but it's not really. It does incorporate a little bit of that, but in a very confusing fashion. I also very much called the twist of this pretty early. It's it's kind of obvious, um, but also too, I found there's some really disorienting weird cuts and weird performance choices in here and times that just absolutely lack any and all sound design whatsoever in places it doesn't seem like that's meant to be an artistic choice. So I don't know what happened with the third one. It just was weird and not like the biggest horror, most horror reveal. I think the other two stories had much, much more horrifying reveals as to what happened i think there was potential in this that you could have given it a horrifying reveal even if it's just maybe somebody died uh while feeding we'll just say because there's a moment of father doing something that's like uh that's a little nerve-wracking but um yeah i don't know the last one just really because it started so strong and then it was just kind of and then it kind of got a little not great in the middle and then by the end i'm like what what is this so I do think this is one of the better indie packaged films they've put in here in a while. The art's great, and I think there's a lot of potential even in the worst of it. But the best of it is damn near great. I mean, could you know if, they had, if you like you gave them more money to really do it right, it would have it could have been something perfect. So uh, kudos to the first team for sure, and kudos to everybody because again they finished it, they got it released and everything, which is uh, you know a rare feat. So can't get mad about that. 
And uh, hey, I got to check it out and I enjoyed checking it out and it's always worth checking out, especially the more obscure stuff. So worst late plans, that's my thoughts. And that completes uh, January Horror Pack. Isn't that amazing? I, I just opened the box like two days ago. Sweet. I'm already working on February. All right, let's let's uh, let's finish this video. Sha! So, okay, again, I haven't watched them yet. I'm filming the unboxing. Um, I have a feeling that this might be my favorite. Obviously, y'all know what my thoughts are now because I love a good anthology and this one looks quality. Uh, but this could be a real surprise. And Mary will probably be interested in watching either one of these tonight. So I will let her know. You'll know because she was already in the review. But I'm going to get on out of here. So let me know. Have you seen these movies? Did you know about them? What did you think? Which one is your favorite? If I liked or disliked any of these, you got recommendations for me? Uh, let me see them, partner. Definitely geek out with me in the comments below. Can't wait to see what you have to say. Again, sorry, Horror Pack. I'm so far behind on these. But I am going to get back on track here. And I'm excited to do so. Other than that, you can click the thumbs up button. Give me the good old thumb of encouragement as I do love to be encouraged. And remember that we will get through this. We will get through this together. Check out my music anywhere you listen to music. Look up Eric Butts, especially on Spotify or go to ericbutts.com. Save $3 on your first horror pack with my code BLOODYBUTTS, which I just love that I got to do that code. That's so much fun and so gross. And of course, as always, if you want to hear my uh, mainstream theatrical horror reviews, be watching the vlogs. Like, I don't know when this came out, but as of today, I just did my Bo is Afraid and Evil Dead Rise review. So in our vlogs, and there's time skips if you just want to see the reviews. Just saying. All right, I'm going to get on out of here. Go watch some more stuff, and I'll see you all. Bye.